anybody know what week it is? Oh, very good. Thanksgiving. And all the <laughs> Christmas lights are up. A lot of places. I'm going to ask you to stand and join in singing this morning. But first, let me uh, offer a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can worship you as a family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that um, the songs we sing this morning would bring honor to you, that be faithful to your word and glorify <laughs> your name. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> Join us as we sing this morning.
Age after age, all generations will bow down and praise. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Let's pray together. Our Father, again today, we're so thankful that we get to be in this place together. You know exactly what we need today. You know what's going on in our lives. And then you ask us by faith to just to uh, cry out to you and to offer ourselves to you. And so we do that. We all have concerns, probably things going on in our lives that uh, we know only you can fix. And so in this moment, in this time of prayer, we come before you in faith. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you are a good, good father. Thank you that you know what's best. And thank you that when we turn to you, we can uh, receive compassion. And so, Lord, we uh, want to lift you up today. And just, again, thank you for this time. May you meet us in this place, and may your will be done in our lives. And so... Hear this prayer today that we pray, and we pray all this in your name. Amen. Before you uh, sit down, go ahead and greet one another. We're so glad that you're here today at Grace Community Fellowship Church. Uh, Many of you probably uh, are just glad that you're here, and I don't know if the sun's going to shine, but it's beautiful. We're glad you're here. Good morning. How's it going this morning? I was looking on Facebook, and Jim Flowers is always giving little things here and there, and I thought he was talking about snow, so I don't know if he's talking about this weekend or next weekend, but still not sure if I'm ready for that no matter what weekend. So, um, In the announcements this morning, uh, we're switching things up a little bit. Uh, The uh, first thing that I want to bring up is uh, Christmas decorations. Um, On Sunday, the 29th, November 29th, we're going to 
have Christmas decorating here in the church um, right following the service. So anybody who is interested is more than welcome to come help out with that. Um, lunch will be provided, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, also, with the Christmas, there's going to be uh, the Christmas uh, program is going to be on uh, the December 17th. There's going to be practice on December 16th at 9.30 a.m. So anybody who's going to be participating in that, please try to make it to the uh, Christmas practice uh, so everything runs as smoothly as possible. If you have any questions, you can uh, see Brenda Williams, and she'll get you straightened out. So um, other than that, uh, just check over. There's lots of things going on. Um, just make sure you see times and places for everything so you can get involved where you want to. Um, the other thing that I would like to mention is the connection card. So there's uh, connection cards in the seat in front of you. Um, fill them out. If you have any prayer requests, if you know anybody that needs something, you can fill that out, put it in the offering tray. There's also a box in the foyer. You can drop that in. Um, if you have any praises, we'd love to hear that kind of stuff too. So answers to God's prayer, we, we will definitely praise him and lift up any concerns you guys have. So, um, Also online, we don't mention this a whole lot, but there's a website, gracemissourivalley.org. Uh, you can put your prayer requests in there and stuff too. So lots of ways to, to get prayer. Um, with that, I think we will go to prayer for the uh, offering this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the, the time that we have here, that we can come together with fellow believers, Lord, to praise your name, to hear your word proclaimed. Lord, we thank you for your word, your truth. Lord, we just ask that you would... Uh, Bless us here this morning with uh, the hearing of your word. Lord, we ask that you would uh, just help us to bury it in our heart, Lord, that uh, we can recall that when we're out in the world and we're you know, going through our daily lives, Lord. We just ask that you would continually bring your word to our minds and to our hearts, Lord. Help us to uh, see those divine appointments that are set for us, Lord, that we see the, the people that are hurting that we can reach out to and either encourage or just help in any way we can. Lord, thank you that you are always there to, to offer assistance, whether it's to us or seekers or whoever, Lord. We just praise you for your faithfulness. God, we ask that you would bless this offering that we're about to take. Lord, that you would bless the givers. We thank you that we have enough that we can share that which you've given us, Lord that uh, we can be a part of your work going on in our community, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we ask that you would be with uh, Hank this morning as he brings your word, Lord, that you would give him your words to speak, the words that we need to hear, Lord, the, uh, the lessons that uh, we need to ponder. Lord, we ask you that uh, you would use him mightily, Lord, that, uh, that you would bless him for, for bringing your word to us, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, church. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, right? Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you. We've been traveling quite a bit. The whole month of October is kind of a blur, but um, we're back now and settled in, ready for the holidays and family time. And so it's an honor and privilege to share with you this morning. Um, we do want to lift up Pastor Brad's grandchildren that um, are sick with RSV, and uh, that's why we wouldn't they didn't make the baby dedication today, so we want to pray for them and, and believe that the Holy Spirit will touch their lives and, and keep them safe. So um, let's just go to prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place. You are always welcome in your church. This is your church, Father. We are your people, your, your vessels, and we desire to be used for good works. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you'll have your way. Your words will be spoken this morning. Lives will be changed and hearts will be turned to the king of glory lord we just lift up um the western camps the, the grandchildren lord each one every one of them lord we we, we rebuke this affliction um, upon their bodies we we claim the blood of jesus over them we claim victory in and by the name of jesus the name above all names and lord we just thank you for this honor this privilege to be able to share your word share it openly without persecution father we thank you for our nation Lord, we don't see that it's always going in the direction towards you, but Lord, we're, we're told in your word to pray for our leaders, so we lift up our leaders, and we just, we lift up our nation to you. We thank you for this nation, but Lord, we ask that you'll turn it back to you, one nation under God. We thank you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So we're kind of continuing uh, through the Lord's Prayer in, in Matthew chapter 6, and um, Brad asked me to share like a week ago, but my sister had told me about it a few weeks prior, and um, I wanted to update you about Japan, because there's a lot of amazing things that happen in Japan, and um, the preaching on one verse, that can be a little difficult. <laughs> um, it can be a little stressing and, and things like that, but I love how the Holy Spirit worked it all out, and just this, this verse just describes what we experienced in Japan on this last trip, and so um, I, I look forward to sharing with you in pictures and everything else about what happened and, and how it ties into Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. It says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. This is part of the Lord's Prayer. This is verse 13. And when I was researching it a little bit, you know, when you're preaching on one verse, you've got to really dissect each word. <laughs> and so I started dissecting the words, and the second word, lead. I looked it up in the Greek, and it's a very powerful, powerful word. And this is what I, I want you to get today, church. I want you to look at this and understand this. That word in the Greek is 1533. That's the number associated with it. But it means to carry in word, literally or figuratively. Bring in and lead into that's what Jesus was saying. When you're praying, ask the Father, ask God to not, to lead us not into temptation. And that temptation is something that we can carry inward. And this is a direct correlation with what Brad spoke last week in verse 12. Forgive us our sins or our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us those who sinned against us. And if we are not forgiving those that are sinning against us, we're carrying it inward. And that's when it causes all sorts of problems. That's when we need deliverance. And God is our deliverer. So we want to share about um, taking things personally, taking things inward, and the things we, we pick up in this life, and how God wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free from those things. So we, we, we just want to dive into this a little bit more. Matthew 6, verse 12 like I said, it, forgive us our debts, forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sinned against us. And my dad preached on this many, many years of his life, and we call it remitting sins. And that goes back to John 20, 23. He says, whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted unto them. But whoever sins you retain, they're retained. So that's taking it inward, right? That's holding on to that sin. And all of us do this. We don't even know that we're doing it because it's so ingrained in our lives. So just driving to church in, um, this morning, we pass a barn. It's right by the golf course. 
and there's a, a sign on it, a flag, and it says some very foul language about our president. How many of you seen that flag? I can't even repeat it. <laughs> what happens when you read that flag? Do you agree with it? Does it start to affect you? It did me a lot of times. I'm like, I don't want my kids reading this. I don't want, you know, people, I don't want my daughter at some point asking me what this means. This is the F word on a sign, you know. So how does that affect you? How do you take that? Do you take it inward? Or are you remitting it and releasing it? And that's what I want to share with you this morning, is how to remit that sin when you see it, when you hear it, when it's all around you. Because you don't want it to affect you. You don't want it to come into you and take control. And that's what the church, it, it's bound by these things that we've allowed into our lives. And a lot of times we don't even know they're in our lives. We don't even know that they've affected us. So when I was a young little whippersnapper, 13 years old, I, uh, okay, I just want to test this out. So here's a magnet. I was a really dumb kid, and we had this uh, pump shot BB gun. You know, the kind that you're going to shoot your eye out, going to shoot your eye out. And I was down in the basement at my parents' house. I was 12 or 13 years old. I don't know what age. But I had this rifle, and I pump it once. And I'm like, I wonder if this hurts. <laughs> and for some dumb reason, I don't know why, I put it on my finger right here, pumped it once, and pulled the trigger. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt a lot. My finger was, I mean, like, it hit the bone, and, and I didn't even know what happened. I had a brace on my finger. It hurt. But I didn't have any open wound or anything, so I didn't think much about it. Healed up. But ever since then, I could feel what I thought was a bump in my finger. This is weird. Over close to 15 years later, I'm working with magnets, and all of a sudden, watch the, it's not a parlor trick. Bong. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. My name's Darwin, I didn't do it. I have to do it that way. The BB's in my finger. I did not know it was there for close to 15 years. <laughs> we take things into our life, this just so you know it's not a trick, but <laughs> the magnet. We, we allow things in our life we don't even know, especially when we're young and dumb. <laughs> Stuff will affect us. <laughs> It'll enter our lives. <laughs> And there will be decades it's affecting us and we don't even know it. The enemy is smart when he does things in your life, when he wants to get footholds and open doors to things. This is where the power of remitting that sin is. So now every day I drive by that sign, Father, I remit that. I don't want to retain it. I have to give it to you. And I pray for that person that has that sign up. I agree with most of what this person is saying in his, you know, um, exploits towards our president. I don't agree with much that Biden has in his administration. But I know I'm not supposed to curse him. I know I'm supposed to pray for him. So it's about releasing it, remitting it so you don't carry it, so you don't take it inward. This is what we do when we, we go on these trips to Japan and Guatemala. This is what my dad did for many, many decades, many um, not centuries, decades. <laughs> when you see sin, you remit it. When you see someone sinning, you remit it. You give it back to the Father, because we cannot hold on to it. Just last night, I'm reading, you know, Fox News on my, uh, my phone app, and there's an article about what happened in Israel. This stuff is horrifying, church. This is horrifying. I can't even repeat the things I was reading in this news article about what they did to men, women, and children. The Hamas brutally killed children because they were told that they will grow up to be soldiers. So it's okay to kill children. Horrifying things. We're not built to retain that. If we retain that, we judge and we get angry with, with the Hamas. And we want to, you go over there and fight for Israel's freedom. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants to pray for those that are persecuting us. Bless those that curse us. 
So I have to remit it. I have to remit it. I said, Father, I can't handle this. I cannot handle this article. I've got to give it to you. Father, teach me to pray for these people. Teach me to really intercede on behalf of Israel. In Japan, we, we had, um, it went with a brother called Milton, named Milton Alvarez. And uh, Milton's been in the ministry for many years. Powerful testimony. Um, just a precious brother. And so when we were talking and preparing for the trip, we didn't know what was on the schedule. We had nothing scheduled when we arrived in Japan except for one um, two, two and a half day um, trip to an island of Shikoku. And so we, we were there for two weeks and we had nothing else, no churches to preach in, nothing on the schedule. But we're, as we're talking on the phone, he says, I, I, I believe we need to go to Suicide Forest and walk and pray Suicide Forest. And the Holy Spirit had told me about Suicide Forest a number of years ago. And it had been on my heart. I'm like, I, I, that's, that, that's confirmation. That's all I need. So we I'm like, okay, that's what we're going to do when we get there. We don't know how to get there. It's three hours from Tokyo. Um, it's, it's a massive forest, so we don't know the lay of the land, but God will provide. God provide um, techs who used to do tours to the Mount Fuji area, Suicide Forest. Now, they don't call it Suicide Forest. That's what the Western world has dubbed it. Um, it's a beautiful forest. This is what's um, been said about it. Um, a- Aokigara Forest has always haunted the poetic imagination. Long ago, it was said to be the name of y- Yurei, Japanese ghost. Now it's the final resting place of as many as 100 suicide victims every year. People go into the forest. They get lost. They get disoriented. They, some peop- Japanese people are saying it's like the Bermuda Triangle. Compasses don't work. Phone signals don't work. Um, they're not going into the, the, the forest is very beautiful. They, they think it's very beautiful. It's volcanic. So it's very rugged and uneven. They call it the Sea of Trees. So it, it's a, a popular tourist place. But there's been such wickedness over the years that it draws people into, into their life. So we brought these gospel tracks and we, we put some in um, plastic Ziploc baggies and positioned them in different areas on the forest. On the front of the gospel track, it says, this is your life. And uh, it, so... We, we went in there, we, we always quote Psalms 24. Anytime we enter a new principality, a new power, a new place, we quote Psalms 24. Open up you gates, we lift up you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And then there's gatekeepers that respond. Who is this king of glory? It's the Lord, strong, mighty in battle. He's the king of glory. And we say it again. Open up you gates, we lift up you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And the gate speakers respond again, the, the keepers. Who is this king of glory? It's the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And we're a part of his host. He's the host. He's the captain of our army. So we go in with the Lord of hosts. That's who we go in with. And we go into these areas that have had spiritual darkness, and the enemy has possessed the lands for centuries. And we do battle. We go to warfare. It's time to work. It's time to put the principles that we've learned from the word of God to action. So we go. We walk and pray these forest areas. And um, we had a powerful, powerful release. We put little stakes in the ground that had Bible verses on them. And we're just putting it in the earth, putting our feet on the earth. We're touching it. We're breaking those curses, those covenants with death. Because the the spirits, they literally draw people in there. They draw them in there. They go off a beaten path, and they get lost, and then they end their life. So we are waging warfare against those spirits that are drawing people in there. There's no reason that should be happening in the natural There's no reason that a place like that, a beautiful forest, people should be ending their lives there. It's wickedness. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So this is what we did. We we, we had this in our on our hearts and and we went and we start walking and praying. There's a a cave at the entrance of where we were at, and there's a cave at the exit. And one's the wind cave, one's the ice cave, but the other nickname is um, like a portal to hell. And so we, we walk and pray in these caves. They have shrines, they have altars everywhere in Japan, everywhere to the gods of this world. And we go, and we take it back. So the first verse in Psalms 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that's in it. So that's our authority. We know it's God. He created it. He founded it. But the enemy has taken it back through sin. And he's had possession of it until God's people rise up and they go and they wage warfare. So we, we had an amazing time there. It was just a, an amazing release. That picture, the first picture I saw showed, um, if you want to go back to that, me and Milton, in the background you'll see Mount Fuji. And 
the clouds are covering it, so you can't really see the, the, the top of it. Mount Fuji is the highest mountain in all of Japan. It's a place of, of Buddhist worship, and it's obviously a high place in the natural and spiritual. So we're, we take that picture, and the clouds on the top, you know, I'm thinking of Moses on the mountain and how the glory of God came down and the clouds covered the mountain. Wow, God. But later on, we got amazing confirmation. I'll share with that a little bit later. So we, we go in. Like I said, I can't stress enough. We quote Psalms 24, so that the king of glory shall come in. My dad's been quoting that for many, many years all over Japan. Like I said earlier, we didn't have a single church service on the schedule that um, my dad's interpreter opened up for us. I, I, I thought going over there, we'd connect with him, and we'd be able to, um, you know, be in some of the churches in the Tokyo area that my dad was at. Not a single one opened up. We ended up the trip being in, I think it was 11 different services in two weeks, church services. <laughs> it was like s five or seven different churches. And each church, one to five people would come up to me and say, hey, I, I heard your dad speak this such and such date. Your dad prayed or prophesied over me. And that prayer, that prophecy really helped us through a difficult time. All over Tokyo. All over Tokyo it was so powerful. God was opening doors. You know, I was trying to open on, of my own ability. But he opened them up, no problem. Second part of this verse says, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. The Webster Dictionary Christmas Church without 1913 Webster's. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> it's so powerful. It gives, like I said, we've said it many times, it's a Bible verse, but it gives a, a meaning, a deep meaning of these words. So it means to be delivered, delivering, to liberate, to give over, to liberate, free, to set free from restraint, to set at liberty, to release, to liberate as from control, to give up, to free, to save, to rescue from e evil, actual, or feared. Wow, this is powerful. <laughs> Deliver us from evil. This is what he's talking about in this verse. But listen to this. To deliver one from captivity or from the fear of death. There is no fear in Jesus. Perfect love casts out all fear. The church is bound by fear at times. And we've got to know that our God has set us free. He's delivered us from that fear. But there's things in our lives that we've picked up, and we've lived with them so long, we don't even know they're there. <laughs> we've got to address it. We've got to go to our deliverer. We've got to go to him to set us free and deliver us. Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Once again, that word deliverer in the Greek and the Hebrew, a primitive a root to slip out, to escape. Um, to deliver, carry away, cause to escape. King James usage, deliver, deliverer. Sabbath, escape, safe. God wants to bring that escape route for you. The Word of God says there's no temptation that has taken you, but with that which is common to man. But God who is faithful will give you a way to escape that temptation. God gives us the way out, but we have to go to him for it. We have to know the Word of God. When we know the Word of God, we have our authority in him. And when the enemy comes in and he plants these little things, they're easy. You just walk right over them, like, don't even notice it anymore. God is our deliverer. He wants to set us free. He wants to set the captives free. After the forest, um, we went to the, a temple at the base of Mount Fuji. And this temple is one of the oldest temples in all of Japan. The, the Tori Gate are the gates that they have at each Buddhist temple. And we'll have a picture of that. So that's a Tory gate. That's the oldest Tory gate in all of Japan. It's the tallest Tory gate in all of Japan. That Tory gate was constructed in 1480. 
You know, who knows when Christopher Columbus discovered America? <laughs> 1492, right? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was okay. <laughs> 1492. Hey, no, we're not going to get in an argument. <laughs> 1492. This thing was constructed before Columbus discovered our country. <laughs> this has been a stronghold of ancestor worship, of devil worship in that country for over 500 years. The next picture shows you how big it is. Um, I'm standing next to it. It's like 120 feet tall. Um, this thing is just massive. Once again, this is where we quote Psalms 24. Open up your doors. Be lifted up, you everlasting, um, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, so the king of glory shall come in. Psalms 144, verse 2. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, once again. My shield in whom I will trust, who subdues my people under me. God wants to deliver his people. But how many of you know you can't have deliverance from something you don't think you have? Everybody else can see it around you, right? My wife, she knows what I need deliverance from. <laughs> I know what she needs deliverance from. <laughs> but there's that enemy, the adversary, who tries to tell us, no, 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 that's normal, that's okay. You don't need deliverance from that. God wants to set his people free, but we have to understand where we are being bound, where we are being tied down to. When we got done walking and praying in the forest, we were back at our lodging, and a Irish, Irish, no, a Scot Scottishman, a Scotman, a Scotman, found a brother we were with. Um, we we traveled with another brother from Alberta, Canada, Joseph Jasinski, and he's been in the deliverance ministry for over thirty years precious brother. We stayed in the Airbnb together. And he has connections in Europe and everywhere else, and so this, um, Scott, Scott, he found out somebody that knew Joseph and found out he was in Japan, and he said, hey, I need some deliverance. Can I come pray with you? So he meets us in the Airbnb, and we're talking with him, and I'm like, what, what's your testimony? How did you come to know the Lord? And he says, well, I wasn't raised in a Christian family, not even Catholic, and I moved to Japan a number of years ago, and I married a Japanese woman. She's not a believer. We started having kids, and something in me said, you need to find God. And so he began to seek out religion. The Spirit was drawing, and the Word of God says, no one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. So he's seeking out religion, as he put it. He looks into Buddhism, Hinduism. He looks into all these religions of the land. His wife comes home one, one of these days, and he's telling her, you know, I, I feel like I need to find something. And she had just received a gospel track out on the streets. She gives it to him and says, try this. She's not a believer. It's a Christian gospel track. He opens it up, reads it, puts it on the table. Number of days pass. He's out and about in Tokyo, city of 38 million people. The Spirit of God begins to draw him again. You should find a church. You should find a Christian church. That's a thought that pops into his mind. Instantly, the enemy says, no, no, th this is Japan. There's no Christian churches here. <laughs> the enemy begins to try and steal that seed away. He looks up, and he sees a cross on a building. <laughs> he goes to the door, knocks on it. The pastor comes out and invites him to church the following Sunday. He comes the following Sunday and gets gloriously saved. <laughs> Powerful testimony powerful. When we plant seeds, they will not return void, church. We've got to be planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. We've got to let the people out there know that there is a deliverer. There is someone that wants to set them free. People are bound by sin. But when we're bound also, it's really hard to share the gospel. We've got to be free also. Scott knew he needed deliverance, and he sought out uh, Joseph with us, found, him, found us in Tokyo. We prayed over him. He said he went to Suicide Forest a number of years ago with a friend. They weren't believers. They just were curious because they've heard so much about it. They went to Suicide Forest, went off the beaten path. He said no more than a, like 300 feet 
hundred yards, they found the remains of two people that had committed suicide. The friend with him, it destroyed him. He said to this day, mentally, he's not right. God wants to set the captives free. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. God has come to give life and give it abundantly. Luke 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is a really interesting verse here. The word deliverance and li liberty have the same meaning in the Greek. It means freedom, pardon, deliverance, forgiveness, remission. Remission. Remission of sins. God wants to take your sin and lift it off of you. God wants us to remit other people's sins so we do not take it personally and carry it with us. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach remission, deliverance to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, and set at freedom, deliverance, liberty, them that are bruised. That br word bruised means crushed. Crushed. How many of you know the enemy wants to crush you? He wants to sift you like wheat. In Luke 22, I don't have this verse up there, it says, And the Lord said to Simon, 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 behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Sift you as wheat. That word sift means, uh, you know, just grind down, constantly grind down and keep sifting it, keep turning into fine flour where it's nothing, basically. The wind can blow it away. That's what enemy wants to do with our faith. He wants to do that to our faith. He wants to sift it and sift it and sift it, not refining it, but crushing it. So when a little attack comes, it just blows you away. But, 32, but, <laughs> I have prayed for you that your faith fails not. His words were to him. He says, it's a powerful statement. Satan's going to sift you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to crush you. But I prayed for you that you fail not. The verse doesn't end there. You'd think it would end there. But he, Jesus knew Simon was going to fail. And he goes on to say, when you are converted, which means to revert, to come again, to be converted. So when you have come back, strengthen your brothers. That's what we do when Satan has sifted us. When we come back, we come back stronger. We come back with the word of God in our hearts. We come back with authority, and then we can help our brothers and sisters that are going through something similar. But you've got to come back. You've got to repent. You've got to get deliverance from whatever it is that's binding you and holding you captive. 1913 Webster's Dictionary for Remission. The act of remitting, surrendering, resigning, or giving up. That's what we're talking about, people. That's what we're talking about. When we see other people's sin, when we hear it, you can touch sin, too. I mean, you can see cigarettes. You can see um, alcohol. You can see these bottles, these different things when you're out and about. That's what it is. It's remitting that, praying for that person. Father, set them free from the bondage they're in. Open their eyes to the truth. Imagine if the church, the whole church, was doing that outside these doors. Imagine if we're praying for everybody that their eyes will be open to the truth, that they'll be set free from their bondage. Wow. The, 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 the buildings wouldn't be able to hold everybody. But we got to do it ourselves. We have to do it. It starts with the church. It starts with us it starts with us not retaining that sin, not holding it, not holding on to it, not condemning those people. The synonyms for remit is to relax, release, abate, relinquish, forgive, pardon, and absolve. 
And that's what happens when we are able to remit it. It relaxes us and it relaxes them because we're no longer judging. We're no longer condemning them. That's God's job. We are not the judge. We are not the jury. We are his saints. We are his, his army. And after we prayer walked the so- forest, we felt a great release. We were rejoicing. We knew something had broken in the spiritual realm. And then I posted a few pa- pictures on Facebook, and I get a response from Maeta. Maeta is the Guatemalan lady that lives in Okinawa. So she's who I met last April, and she's a powerful intercessor. And so she sees the post about Suicide Forest, and she sends me this message. She says, Hank, I read your post on Facebook. I wanted to share this vision that the Lord gave me. We have been praying for God to send intercessors to Mount Fuji and Suicide Forest since May of this year. (laughs) I believe that it is the key to what God is doing in Japan, and it's crucial for revival on the mainland. Listen to the vision that God gave her back in Uh, June of this year. In the month of June 2023, I was praying with other intercessors, and the Lord showed me a giant sleeping. Okay, now this picture, she did not, this is what she saw, but she did not find this picture yet when she wrote this. A giant sleeping, he was tied to the ground, it was like Gulliver. It had what looked like ropes or chains that bound him and hindered his movement. I asked the Lord, what is this? The Holy Spirit said, it is my church, it is sleeping, it can't get up. Pray that each chain would be broken so that my people may rise. As I continued to pray, I would see words that represented spirits and sins that were binding the church in Japan. I began to pray and to repent and plead the blood of Jesus over each spirit and sin as they came to my mind. As I looked, I noticed the body was like cement. It was like a hard shell. I knew that as we continued to pray and intercede and repent, the ropes and chains would break. The Lord showed me all the chains breaking. The church, a giant, woke up, and suddenly lightning came from heaven and pierced the giant right in his heart with a flashing sword. The giant arose immediately, a a radiant bride. Her light shone so bright it spread through the nearby coastlands and the nation of Japan. I've heard a teacher say that an enemy exposed is an enemy defeated. Ephesians 5.13 says, But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Isaiah 6, 1, 61, verses 1 and 2, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach and proclaim the good news. Interesting, that verse is in the message today. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32, If I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on justice, I will re- render vengeance to all my adversaries. That's what she saw, a flashing sword pierced the giant. Okay, so listen to this. As I was preparing to write my journal entry on this blog, I was searching for an image to share with it. I was hoping to find a drawing or maybe an image from a film or a movie. I found a picture that was just what I saw. And when I looked at the picture, I was surprised at what I saw in the background. I could see Mount Fuji. As I examined the image carefully, I realized it was a real place. Could this be here in Japan? Sure enough, it was a picture taken from a theme park called Gulliver's Kingdom, located near Suicide Forest. As I did more research, I learned that this theme park was only open for four years before it closed down. Some believe that one of the reasons was due to its location. The developers thought that a location close to Mount Fuji would be perfect due to the high traffic of tourists that visit Mount Fuji every year. However, this area is also neighbor to Suicide Forest, one of the highest places of suicides in the world. So God shows her this vision back in June, and then she finds this picture And they're praying that God will send intercessors to Suicide Forest and Mount Fuji. We didn't know anything about this until after we were there. So God gives us this confirmation. We're just rejoicing. We're thinking, wow, hallelujah. God is moving. God is moving. He wants to send revival all across the islands of Japan. My dad saw a a vision many years ago, and he saw a tsunami of God's glory coming from Okinawa and just flooding over the mainland and all the islands of Japan, and God's revival coming to that nation. That nation is over 120 million people. Christianity is less than 2% as a whole. It is one of the hardest nations to reach the lost in. But God's glory, when it comes, it will just take their hearts and it will change them immediately. There's nothing that compares to God's glory. There's nothing. It's what draws people unto him. Last part of this verse, 
Matthew 6 says, For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we get that report and we're just rejoicing. God is doing so many things. There's so many awesome testimonies that we experienced in Japan while we were there. Just every day God was doing mighty works. But we kept coming back to Psalms 24. Open up your doors, be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And so we, we, we quote those verses, Psalms 24, at each temple, everywhere we go, Anytime we're entering a different stronghold, a different principality and powers, we quote those scriptures so we can go in with the king of glory. But it says five times it mentions the king of glory. Five times in those four verses. And two times it says the king of glory shall come in. It reminds me of Exodus 24, verse 15. And Moses went up to the mountain and a cloud covered the mountain, like I shared with you earlier, the, the white clouds that covered Mount Fuji reminded me of the, this verse. But then it says, the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days, and the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. But verse seven, 24, chapter 24, Exodus, verse 17 says, And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of all the children of Israel. About eight days after we had walked and prayed Mount Fuji, I get a message from somebody that I don't even know. I friended them on Facebook. I still don't know their name because it's in Japanese. And she sends this message to me. Brother Hank, Mount Fuji has shined gold by a photo that is unprocessed, un, un, um, doctored. It's from a photographer on the 20th. He said this is the first time possibly in a hundred years that this has happened. I think it's a sign because you pray, walked and prayed, Mount Fuji. So this picture shows a beautiful glory of God. That, the TV screen might show it a little bit better. But the next picture really shows the glory of God. First time in possibly a hundred years. So they have no other pictures of this. Because they weren't color photos back then. <laughs> they just have writings. The king of glory shall come in. The confirmation from God was just beautiful. He wants his glory to cover the whole earth. He wants his glory to cover his people. And he wants to bring the lost in. The lost shall be found. But we have to walk around. We have to carry the glory of God with us. We, our faces have to shine brightly like Moses did when he came out of the glory of God. When your faces shine differently, people notice it. They know there's something different about you. And in Japan and, and all these other nations all over the world, people have to see something that's genuine and that's different. Because the God of this world, he corrupts and he, he takes those things and he, he tries to mimic them. And he does a, a decent job. Just like in, with Moses and Pharaoh. All his people, Pharaoh's people in witchcraft, they almost did everything that Moses did. They turned the, um, the Nile to red, to blood. They, they did the plague of frogs and, and lice and different things. And it just continued to harden Pharaoh's heart. But there's things that God could only do. And that's where we have to stand up. We have to shine that light, that glory, that can only be from God in his presence. But to get the glory of God, you have to be in his presence. You have to desire more from him. God wants to bring each of us to a place that we've never been before. He wants to bring us to a deeper spiritual walk with him. He wants us to reach the lost. The king of glory shall come in. The whole earth will be covered with the glory of God. 
God confirmed just so many other things. Um, we met an interpreter in Japan, and this lady, she, she, the Holy Spirit told her to move from Kobe to Tokyo area and to work with the, the street girls in the red light district. These are young girls who get caught up in prostitution. It's legal in that area. They just lie about their age, so they don't do anything to them. And so um, this lady is told by the Holy Spirit to move, sell everything in Kobe and, and move to Tokyo and start working with these girls. And so we meet Shima is her name. We meet her on a Thursday night, and we had been scheduled to preach Friday, but our interpreter wasn't available Friday, so we were looking for an interpreter. And it got lined up where she would interpret for us. So she met me at the train station the next day, Friday evening. And we're at the train station waiting for one other person, and she says, I have a son that lives in, that goes to university in Iowa. I'm like, oh, wow, cool. I'm like, where at? Thinking Iowa State, Iowa, whatever. She's like, oh, Council Bluffs. Oh, of course. Iowa Western. Yeah, Iowa Western. My wife graduated from Iowa Western. Wow, small world. That's amazing. I'm like, what brought him to, you know, Iowa? It's like, actually, he lived with a host family for the last um, three or four years, and he graduated from Abraham Lincoln. Host family's name is Ryan Higgins. He's a teacher there. Ryan Higgins. That sounds really familiar. My mind's just turning, 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 turning. My son plays with kids from Abraham Lincoln on a basketball team. I'm almost certain he plays with one of these kids. So your son... The family he lives with, the Higgins family, do they have a son that's named, nicknamed E, E. Timmy? She's like, yeah. <laughs> My son plays basketball with your, your son's stepbrother, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> I've met Ryan Higgins. <laughs> I've met his wife. <laughs> I, how is this possible, Lord? A city of 38 million people. I meet her less than 24 hours, and we're connecting the dots, and we are connected like one degree of separation. How, Lord, how? <laughs> only by him, only by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. He wants to connect all of the believers. He wants to connect the body of Christ, even though we're thousands of miles away, thousands of miles. God is good. His faithfulness is, is it's unmatched. But he desires his church to be set free. This isn't only the Japanese church. This is the American church. This is the churches all over the world. By sin that we don't even know about. Entered us a long time ago. A long time ago. And we haven't dealt with it. We haven't taken the authority over it. It's just like the Lord said later. I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you. Some of the stuff only goes out by prayer. Other only goes out by standing on God's word, being in his word, being around fellow Christians, being in church. Deliverance comes in different forms, different shapes, but a majority of the time it comes through prayer. And we want to pray with you today. We want to give you that opportunity to get rid of some of the stuff that you may not know that you have or you don't think that is affecting you. But those around you see it. Those around you know it. And the enemy has blinded your eyes. It's okay. Every Christian deals with it. The enemy is, he's very deceptive. God wants you to be free. He's your deliverer. He wants to free you. But you have to take that step. You can't just accept Christ and then, yeah, the old things have passed away. All things have become new. But there's still that nagging sin, still things in your life that are affecting you. And God wants to set you free. Before we go into prayer time, I want to ask the question, is there anybody in here that does not have a relationship with the King of Glory? Is there anybody here that does not know him as your Lord and Savior? Does not know Jesus? You have not accepted him in your heart. Is there anybody in here that would be bold enough to raise your hand and say, I have not, I want to pray? Is there anybody in here this morning that does not receive Christ? Becky, if you want to start the song really low. It's not a game, church. It's not a game. No one is promised tomorrow. I'm not trying to guilt you into a decision, but I want you to know that there is no guarantee of tomorrow. Whether you're young or old, there is no promise for tomorrow. If 
you do not have him in your life, if he has not been a part of your life, make that decision today. Accept him into your heart today. He will set you free. It takes time. Some people get set free overnight. Others, it's a journey. If you don't know the King of Glory, please, please find someone and pray with us. Pray with us today. This song is a powerful song. It's, it's the words that we've been preaching about this morning. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Church, we want you to have freedom in Christ. We want freedom in Christ. I want to pray together corporately, but we want to open up the altar area. If you need prayer, if there's things in your life that are in your life, you know about them, but you have not dealt with them, we want to pray with you. There's no condemnation. There's no judgment in it. God wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. He wants to take those chains and those ropes and break them free. But you've got to take a step of faith. You've got to come to him. You've got to seek out prayer at times. You've got to be in his word. But don't let the enemy hold you back. Don't let pride, don't let fear hold you back. Heavenly, we just come before you. Holy Spirit, we welcomed you in this place. You are always welcome in this place. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you will bind any spirits of fear right now. They will be inoperable in the name and by the blood of Jesus. They will not keep anybody from coming for deliverance. They will not allow anybody to, to stay in their seats that know that they need deliverance, but your Holy Spirit will bind anything that is not of you in this room right now. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you will reach and you'll convict the hearts. You will speak to each and every one individually. And Holy Spirit, you will just move in their lives. You will give them freedom that you desire for them. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Father, we desire to be free. We desire to have your freedom so that we can do the work of the gospel, so we can do your kingdom work. We can't do your work if we're bound and we're, we're full of fear or anxiety. We're full of unbelief or we're full of unforgiveness. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you'll move on the hearts. You'll move on their hearts. And Father, we will find freedom. We'll find deliverance today. We praise you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. So church, if you are bound, if you are bound by fear, if there's any bitterness, anger, or anything like that in your life that is holding you down, please take a step of faith. Come forward. There's no condemnation in Christ. There's no condemnation, but sometimes we have to take that step of faith to receive the freedom, to receive the, the, the price that he paid for us. If it was other, if it was different, if, if it was, if Christ dying on the cross gave everybody salvation and they didn't have to do anything for it, there would be no church, there would be nothing. But we have to accept that gift he's given us. He's given us salvation and he's given us deliverance. He's set the captives free. Please, if you have anything in your life and you want prayer, we, we're going to be up here. We want to pray with you. We believe that the Holy Spirit is going to set the captives free.